Okay. Um, my name is Simon Riggs, and I'm going to uh, talk to you about uh, PostgreSQL. I've got 20 minutes, uh, so it's going to be a very short presentation. Um, why 9.0 things? Well, that's the, uh, the number of the latest release. So I wanted to remind you uh, that uh, a new major release of PostgreSQL is out. Got lots of new features. Going to talk about some of them today. Who am I? Uh, I'm the press officer for the Postgres project in the UK, uh, so it's my job to uh, go around telling people about this type of stuff. Uh, also, uh, one of the main developers and the committer on the project, so um, you know, I'm very involved from a, from a technical perspective as well. Uh, so, if there's any questions afterwards, very happy to take that. I don't think I've got time for questions in 20 minutes, so, so just come and get me afterwards. Um, I'm also the CTO of a, a company called Second Quadrant, which is a very heavy sponsor of the Postgres project, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and I've been working with databases for years. So, so what I'd like to do uh, today is just have a bit of fun around the, uh, the question of why use PostgreSQL. Uh, and because it's Christmas, it, uh, it reminded me that uh, this type of question is a very Scrooge-like question. People always say to me, why would I use Postgres? Why wouldn't I use something like SQLite? And the thing is, if you don't already know the answer to that question, then it's a very difficult thing to start explaining the whole of database architecture and the reasons. But I'm going to try it, okay? Uh, and, and in terms of nine things to remember, I'm going to talk about three things that already existed in Postgres. I'm going to talk to you about three things that are new in Postgres and also three things that are coming up in later versions of Postgres. So Christmas past, Christmas present, and Christmas future. So <clears throat> I'm not sure whether you're Scrooge or whether it's your boss who's Scrooge, or I'm not going to make any comments along those lines, but I'm just going to try and uh, remind you a couple of fun things uh, about Postgres, just to sort of tip your memory about why, you, why you're using it and why you should use it. So, first off, uh, Postgres supports something called MVCC, Multi-Version Concurrency Control. But what does that mean? It means that uh, when you run a read query, that read query will not block people updating or inserting into that database. Uh, and the same is true the opposite way around, that while you're writing to the database, queries don't get blocked. So, you don't have a query that should run in 10 milliseconds waiting for five seconds before it gets its 10 milliseconds. So that's a, an extremely important uh, capability. And some of you will say, well, that's nice, because InnoDB does that as well. Um, and uh, that's good, I agree. Um, the next thing uh, we do is something called asynchronous commit. You can choose, if you wish, to not wait for the changes that you made to the database to be written to disk. Okay? Um, and we call that asynchronous commit. Uh, it's also a facility that you get with my ISAM uh, in, in MySQL. Now, with Postgres, you get both of those things together on the same table. And we also provide it with a very fine uh, level of control because what you can do is you can choose particular transactions to have asynchronous commit and other transactions to have normal synchronous commit. So an extremely fine level of control over the performance of your system. And we've had that for uh, four years now. <coughs> this is something that you may have seen before. These are the performance results from 2006. So uh, the one on the right is Postgres. It's showing it's quite stable under load. It is scalable when you add CPUs, it gets faster. Uh, that type of thing. Um, so this is the performance results as of four years ago. Uh, to be honest, we haven't done an extensive study since then, but as you can see, it's, it's good enough that we haven't really worried about it since. And that probably means we haven't bothered to tell anybody about it, to be honest. Uh, so I just wanted to remind you that that level of performance exists. Uh, and in fact, uh, tracking the performance gains we've made in Postgres over the last uh, seven releases shows that we've actually gained uh, 25 times performance on a single node uh, over those uh, 
over that time. So with these seven dot three postgres basically had four percent of the performance of later releases. So when people say to you postgres is slow, well it was. That's a fair comment. Uh, it's just not anymore. Um, so uh, an independent conclusion uh, by the guy that produced those results uh, was that we probably need to rethink um, what we understood about Postgres. And uh, a, a useful tip, just throwing out there, uh, is use the limit clause on your SQL. Now, just a quick explanation of why. Uh, I suggested recently, or a little while ago, on the uh, Django community that uh, their object relational mapper should have some way to express uh, the fact that you didn't want the whole set back. SQL is a set-based language, so if you ask for all of the records that match a certain criteria, you will get them. Okay? Now, unfortunately, if that's 10 million records, it's going to take a while to get them, and it's going to take a while to send them back. But if you think like Google, it doesn't matter how many rows there are, just send me the first 10. Now, I'm telling you, your queries will speed up, okay? Because the optimizer knows that you're only going to retrieve 10 rows, and it will start using an index. So if you're ever having one of those moments of, why doesn't Postgres use an index? It's probably because you've asked it to retrieve 300,000 rows, and using an index would be completely stupid in that case. All right? So use limit, and you'll suddenly find all your queries will work very quickly. So, Christmas present. What's new in Postgres? Well, um, obviously enough, I was going to talk quite a lot about Perl. Um, and, then, uh, and then I realised that Tim Bunster was going to be here, uh, who was talking for uh, 80 minutes about Perl and Perl. And I thought, gosh, that's going to be, you're going to be quite bored if I, if I talk about that. Sufficient to say that in Postgres 9 there are a lot of extensions to PL Perl. You can run Perl inside the database. But I'm not aware of any other database system that allows you to write your database functions in Perl. Now if you think that, okay, that's fine, it's not my corporate standard to use PL Perl or whatever, then you can use some Perl-like facilities in the rest of the SQL. There are, for example, regular expressions which are fully indexable. Uh, you've got case insensitive or case sensitive matching. Uh, you can do things like split strings into an array. Um, so, very, very cool features that you don't necessarily need to write yourself in PL Perl. You can just use those functions directly. Uh, another thing that's important in the latest release is we've introduced something called join removal. Um, now, this is described in the release notes, but it's one of those things where you need to have it explained to you to understand. So, how many people use object relational mappers? Uh, okay. How many people like the terse and efficient way that it generates SQL? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so, what we've done is um, we've uh, put some features into the SQL optimizer to strip away joins that were generated in the SQL. So very often we understand that writing SQL automatically is hard. Uh, so uh, the people that write ORMs have got quite a tough job to do. And that means that the, the SQL that they submit is sometimes a little bit fatter than it needs to be. And we're putting stuff in there to strip that out. Okay? So, what we're trying to do is make it easier to write ORMs that work well against Postgres. Okay? And that's available in 9.0, uh, and, and I really hope that uh, it works for you. Uh, what I'd like to say is, if you know about different types of SQL that don't work correctly, then tell us, because we may be able to optimise that for that. Okay? Obviously, you may get the response, I'm sorry, that's not an optimisation that we think should be put in, but if you don't ask, we would not know. And other things that uh, are available in 9.0, um, complex SQL support. Uh, 
we introduced windowed aggregates in the last release. Who knows what a windowed aggregate is? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So if you want to appreciate the power of PostgreSQL, you've got to understand that this, it, <coughs> these features uh, offer you the ability to write uh, an efficient indexable query in a very complex way. You don't need to retrieve it back to the client and then post-process it or sort it and do various things. You can write some extremely complex SQL. Now these leading and lag operators uh, basically allow you to do things like um, smoothed predictions using the last three values uh, in a sequence and things like that. So some extremely complex things. So, it turns out that you know, whatever language you're writing in, um, the SQL language is an extremely powerful one. Um, and to be honest, some of the ways that you can write SQL now in Postgres, um, it, it just blows my mind. Um, I have difficulty writing the SQL sometimes, I'll uh, be forced to admit. Now, when I say we support that SQL, what I mean is, and we optimise it. Yeah, so it's not just syntax that we accept and then do it in a really stupid way. We actually optimise the execution of that. <coughs> okay, so that's what's in the latest release. Now I'm sort of working to an incredibly short timetable here, so um, I'm just trying to give you the, the, the flavour of things. So what's happening in the future? Uh, are we just in a situation where Postgres has got a lot of stuff now and in a couple of years' time it will be just the same as every other day in space because everything will catch up? Well, possibly. What's happening with uh, the, the future of Postgres is uh, that in the next release we are introducing formal extensions which um, uh, to you um, Perl people will be uh, extremely uh, familiar because uh, you're well used to the idea that if you need a tool or function, you can just download it, you can include it in your programs. Now that hasn't been easily possible with Postgres up to now. We've supported extensions, but we've kind of made it a little bit hard for them to, to be used. But what we're doing now is these formal space for user space extensions. Uh, there's going to be uh, a, a website and an organisation uh, that is uh, delivering extensions to you, uh, including things like a, a human description, metadata, a download site, all of those things um, are going to be significantly easier, easier in the next release. Okay. Not say it's... Um, that will be Postgres 10, Postgres 9.1. 9.1. So that's the one that's out in about... <coughs> seven months. <coughs> Next things uh, we have coming, we've got uh, semi-synchronous replication. Um, at the moment we're calling it synchronous replication, but we'll probably call it that because that's my, what my sync will call it. Uh, the additional sense that we're adding to it is that you will be able to have full transaction control over how you persist your data. So in the same way that you could choose asynchronous commit, you'll be able to say, this transaction is very important and I want to wait for the changes to be sent to the remote site. Or you can say, this transaction is not worth anything to me, so I'm not going to wait for that to be persistent. So you're going to have, again, transactional control over your robustness. Now what I mean by transactional control, you don't have to even decide ahead of time. Halfway through the transaction, you can say, hmm, the value of this transaction is really high. I'd better persist that. Or you can say, hmm, transaction value is zero. Oh, I'm not going to worry about that. And you can actually decide that midway through the transaction, if you wish. Um, some other things that are coming in terms of availability, lock strength reductions. You will be able to add columns, you'll be able to drop columns, without stopping queries executing against the table. You'll be able to add triggers, you'll be able to add foreign keys, all without stopping select statements from executing against those tables. 
Okay? So in terms of data availability, we're not just talking about that sort of high availability technology, I mean true availability. Anything that stops you accessing your data is an availability issue to us. <coughs> All of these things are going to be in night one. What's going to happen in the future beyond that? Well, um, I'm happy to say that uh, the second quadrant of my company is involved with uh, a number of European research projects and they are quite literally giving us money to work on post Um So some of the issues that we had before with uh, generating funding to work on the open source thing, they're not completely solved, but certainly we have uh, good amounts of money uh, put into uh, some of the things that we're working on. Uh, and uh, highlight features, uh, we're going to be doing some SQL features. That's kind of like the opposite of no SQL. <laughs> um, and uh, multi-master replication that works. Um, so th those are some things that are, that are happening in the future. So Postgres is uh, extremely advanced now, and it's going to get even more so in the future. Um, so, if you are looking for some Christmas presents, um, we've just released uh, a couple of books uh, that will help you with uh, understanding Postgres. These, both of those books, uh, mix very basic uh, aspects of Postgres with very advanced ones. So if you've never used it before, it will help. If you've used it a lot, it will still help. Okay? So we've, we've, we've taken the approach of um, moving the worlds forward in, uh, in terms of putting some actual advanced stuff into the books. So it's not a case of, you know, Postgres is great, but it takes you 10 years to work out how to use it. The idea is that you'll be able to up and, uh, up and running with some complex features inside just a few days. Uh, using uh, the information in the books. Um, so I think I'm, I'm almost done. I'll just end by saying uh, something about my company, which is Second Quadrant. Uh, we're the largest Postgres uh, consulting and services company in Europe. Um, we're probably still very small. I don't think Oracle's uh, sweating at the prospect of our arrival. Um, but we are big enough to, uh, to work with uh, some new clients and uh, you know, we'd like to work with you. Um, one last point, uh, we're hiring as well, so if you'd like to talk to me about that, uh, you're very, very welcome to uh, talk to me afterwards. So, is that all within 20 minutes? Yeah, good luck. <laughs> exactly. exactly.